When we think of cities, we think of city lights, fast moving traffic, and high rise buildings, making it a buffet of organized chaos. The one thing which we are mostly unaware of is an underlying pattern in which the city is planned that provides it with all of these characters. Planning is the physical layout of human settlements. Out of various forms of settlements, gridiron pattern is widely used in which pattern of streets run at right angles to one another. It is arguably great when you expect the city to grow really fast and allow orderly settlement. This pattern can be traced back to the ancient cities of Indus Valley Civilization, Greece and Rome. Let's try to understand how these grids function by looking into the cities of Barcelona and New York. The walled city of Barcelona, with its maze-like network of the street, was rapidly outgrowing due to sudden influx in population. Barcelona's four streets were arranged at random, where living conditions were deteriorating. Edifos Serda proposed to unite the old city of Barcelona with surrounding towns and villages through the grids. Fresh air, green spaces, modes of transport, and proximity to markets were given preferences. In 1807, frustrated by years of uncontrolled development and a decade of public health epidemics attributed to Lower Manhattan's cramped and irregular streets, a street plan for Manhattan was developed over Hudson Street. They drew streets and avenues across the island without regard to its rugged landscape. In Barcelona, the grid pattern had long, white streets that cut across the blocks to facilitate transport and navigation. Each of the blocks had chamfered corners, giving the impression that they were cut off. This detail would provide greater air circulation in the streets, higher visibility around the corners, and the orientation of the blocks ensured enough natural light for every household. The mixed land use as a major parameter along the edges created a porous, active, and vibrant identity. The shape of the blocks, initially planned, eventually changed as it grew on all the four sides, with central space occupied by parking and other constructions. In New York, right-angle blocks made compact junctions with built forms squeezing skywards. Natural light has always been in short supply for most New Yorkers, impacting the health conditions of people and making it main drivers for first zoning and land use bylaws. The hyper-local building pattern within the block gave Manhattan small-scale variety within the larger block context. The lack of neighborhood-level public spaces generated the need for reclaiming space for people to socialize as Central Park at present is the only major city-level open space in New York. To cater to these demands of public space in both Barcelona and New York City, a few interventions were introduced. In the case of Barcelona, the local council announced its plan to create super blocks. These are neighborhoods of nine blocks where traffic is restricted to major roads, opening up entire group of internal streets to pedestrians, cyclists, and space to interact. There are currently only six super blocks in operation, but despite some early pushback, the change has been broadly welcomed by residents. The New York City Plaza program is an initiative to reinvent public realm, enhance existing pedestrian plazas, and create new public spaces. Due to population density, the city still has fewer acres of green space per person than almost any other major city in the United States. The program ensures that all New Yorkers live within a 10-minute walk of quality open space. Around 70 new public plazas were installed in place of underused street space. The grid that were initially introduced to simplify the irregular growth and ease the construction process later became too mechanical and vehicular oriented. In order to break the barriers, the interventions such as superblocks and reclaiming plazas were introduced. With the pressing need of making the cities livable, New York City and Barcelona are now rethinking of remolding the city grids. But as these interventions are still at an ascent stage, the future of these grids is unknown.